Hi, so we're going to talk about increasing clinical productivity with faster logins and single sign-on. So let's talk about logging in and, and what a normal clinician or physician goes through in a day. They might use laptops or tablets or who knows what they're using now to get to their data. They could be using anything. And when they go in, they could be looking for any type of information. There's no real rhyme or reason today between these two. It's kind of out of control. It used to be where you could control one thing to one thing, a one to one ratio. Now it's kind of a one to many ratio. Those are the good old days when we had mainframes, one to one ratio. Um, the, the idea here is that single sign-on will allow your staff, no matter where they are or what type of staff they are, to be able to select their device that they might be at or the, the device they might even bring and be able to log into it using a badge, a biometric, maybe a cell phone for an SMS or an OTP token, that type of information to get to the productivity piece of their day. And if single sign-on can make that smooth and fast for them, then you've solved one of your problems. Uh, you don't have the fight with your physician that says, I don't want to have to remember 20 passwords. I don't want to have to remember five passwords. I don't want to have to enter passwords. Uh, what about if they're in a, in a uh, critical care area where they're wearing gloves and they can't enter those passwords because they can't touch the keyboard? We can use an iris scanner there to get them in. So the way we accomplish this at the workstation side, or at your VDI or your Citrix side, is we have a, a product called Secure Login. Secure Login is an agent that lives on your workstation or in your VDI environment, and it actually detects, it monitors, it watches much the way a virus protector watches your system. So as your physician, clinician goes in doing their work, when they start an application, Secure Login actually detects the application has started and looks for key fields on the page, whether it's a web page or a, or a Windows dialog. When it finds the right fields, it responds to them. Maybe it needs to put in a username and password. Maybe it just needs to click OK. Or maybe it needs to do a print or put a log entry file in for you so you can use it later to show that occurrence has happened, this user accessed this record type of stuff. So we enhance that whole process of watching and we watch your Windows or Web or Java emulators, whatever you have. We enhance that by providing a secure enhanced um, security with strong passwords or we can also use any type of device you might want a biometric that type of stuff e-prescribe for instance requires a two-factor authentication to write or fulfill a prescription so we can layer that right at the point of writing the prescription which is what the e-prescribe rule actually says rather than a lot of people who have implemented it when the app starts so you can, you can do it on a transaction basis. So you can layer the security right on top of an app. All of these things improve your user's experience. There's not a lot of things in the IT world that you can do that a user actually sees. IT personnel are generally the plumbers, right? We're doing everything in the walls, behind the scenes, and nobody knows anything about it until it goes wrong. If it goes wrong, then that's when people complain. But this is something that really affects your users, their ability to do their job. Uh, Secure Login actually is kind of unique in that it leverages your already existing environment. So it runs inside of your AD environment. You don't have to have extra servers, extra components of any type. And it, it helps you deliver that quick win for your personnel. How does it work? It's pretty simple. So if you don't have an identity management system to actually provide the credentials into us through a Java applet we have, then we'll capture them and we'll securely store them. And once, we, once we've stored them the first time the app starts, 
we will then provide them back for that app every time the app starts again. When the application has a changed password event or an expired password event, we simply take that password that is known, put it in this place where it says your old password, and then you have an option. You can allow the user in or a new password, or you can randomize a password based upon a password policy. Randomization is real popular now because there are a lot of password uh, breaks now, a lot of violations and that type of stuff. If you randomize it, your users can't share it. You can make it as complex as the system will allow. Uh, for instance, if you're randomizing for an AD system, that could be 253 characters long. So you can make it a password that's almost impossible to guess. Passwords are not necessarily synchronized because synchronization Though it sounds good, it's really least common denominator, right? Because you've got to pick the system with the weakest password policy and bring all your other systems down to that. So this allows you to use an individual password for each and every system. And as I said before, it supports Windows Web, Java, Citrix. Uh, one thing that isn't on here is it also supports Flash and Flex applications now. So it goes even further than that. Windows 32 or 64, not Windows 16. And uh, Java, we support two versions back. So, major versions or minor? Major. Two major versions back. What about Citrix? Uh, Citrix, we support two major versions back. Yeah. This is just uh, in case somebody asks. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's all about the, ver you know, we can't support everything forever. We do still support XP and will support XP for a long time because there's a lot of people on this floor in here that still run XP. How does it work? From an IT perspective, you need to teach our system about your applications. Once you've taught the system about it, you then deploy that knowledge, that template for the application out to the users by putting it on an OU level and it just drains down through the directory to them. So the way you teach them is we have a wizard. When a wizard sees the dialog for logging in, it simply asks your IT person, this is not a user at a desktop, not a clinician or a physician, but a user at a desktop, it simply asks, do you want to do uh, SSO to it? And then you go through these tabs and you complete each one of these tabs to tell it how to respond to the application. So of course the first one is, what's your credential source? Does it have its own or are you going to use the Active Directory credentials they just logged in with? Or are you going to use some other application that you've already enrolled? So it gives you some options there. Beyond that, you can identify the fields, change the names. Um, if you use biometrics or some other form of advanced authentication, the re-authentication capability, you can layer that on top right through this wizard. And that's really how easy it is. There's not a lot to it. If you'd like to see it, we have it set up right behind us. And um, we also have our web SSO set up right behind us as well. So you could see our web SSO and cloud SSO working on tablets. These all tie together to make it one smooth system for you.